Good morning. Thank you guys for attending my course, again, Synergy of Human Movement. My name is Chris Gellert. I'm the physical therapist and a personal trainer and president of Pinnacle Training Consulting Systems. Today you're with me with this two-day course. It's a course that's interactive and lecture on just that, human movement. When we talk about movement or the biomechanics movement, I'm really talking about the osteokinematics, which if you look at Mr. Spine here, is the movement that occurs between the bones. As in the picture illustrated, it is with cervical. So when I talk about rotation of the neck, right rotation, left rotation, it's referring to the motion that occurred between the facets, both cervical, lumbar, and, I'm sorry, cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. With that right rotation, the facets, where they show these little things that are between one another, they help glide motion. Okay? The red thing is the carotid artery, something we never want to occlude, especially as a therapist. So when you turn your head to the right, these will go down on the right and up on the left. Conversely, when you do left rotation, they will go up on the left, down on the right. Why is that important to know? Someone may come to you with a headache or a neck problem and not be able to turn their head. So you don't want to start doing things that turn their head and twist because it could irritate the facets, it could be a disc, it could be just muscular spasm, or et cetera, okay? If you look down further in page 55, movement analysis of all joints. This is an analysis of what the body does with all of our joints. And you can see on page 55, the shoulder, for example, has six degrees of freedom. Flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, external and internal. Why is that important? Well, if you understand the degrees of freedom, you can understand how we move and what joint is supposed to do. Then you tie that into and we get an integrative training about how the body can move, but to train someone functional. Instead of training someone just straightforward, training them diagonal, because that's functional. Because fibers, particularly gluteus medius, are weaker in a diagonal pattern than in a straight pattern. Hold that thought. I'm going to challenge your thinking. Again, muscle fibers of gluteus medius are weaker in a diagonal pattern than a straight pattern. Okay? I have scientific research to back that up, so I'll talk about this in a minute. We look at now the arthrokinematic motion. What that means is actually the motion between articular surfaces. If you look at Mr. Scapula here, shoulder, as in the red, that is supraspinatus. As you all know, supraspinatus is from the supraspinous fossa to the greater tubercle. It does abduction, okay? Innervated by the suprascapular nerve. What I'm showing you here is that when you abduct, that supraspinatus is being engaged right? But the humerus is being engaged from an osteokinematic. Arthrokinematically, the, the supraspinatus is being engaged, okay? So those are the two differences from a visual point of view and anatomical. So important to know the two. When we look as therapist people with injuries, I'm assessing someone in, who's in pain. Typically, they're in pain, they can't move, but a joint needs to be free. If it's stuck, or if it's stiff, or if it's moving too much, it has to be free restrictions. If it's moving too much, we go right to stability. As personal for trainers and fitness professionals, you most likely are more people who are probably stiff and are tight. You want to stretch them. We are going to do joint mobilizations, which are going to mobilize one joint surface on another, not manipulate, to restore mobility so that the motion occurs naturally, so they can fully flex abduct their arm, for example. Fully extend or flex their knee. Fully extend or flex their hip. So they can tie that into running, sprinting, climbing stairs, getting on a chair. Common functionalities. Where the stability part